What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Breakaway Podcast. I'm your host, John Root, and my goodness, we live in a wild, wild world. It's actually insane what I was seeing and witnessing in Atlanta, Georgia at the NCAA Division I Women's Swimming Championships. But before we get into this and intro our very special guest for this Sunday conversation, TPUSA Live. They want to give you the truth. You also get a lot more of me. What an absolute dream, right? You can go to tpusa.com slash live, going live every single day. Drew Hernandez, Jack Posobiec, yours truly, a lot of great conservative voices, giving you the truth and giving the tools and resources to fight back against the woke culture. But one way to fight back against the woke culture is speaking out against it. And what I want you to know about this interviewee that you are about to be introduced to, this is Seth Houston a Division I coach at Rice University. He became the first active Division I coach that spoke out against what the NCAA allowed in these swimming competitions. You got to remember, the NCAA needs to be held accountable for this. I don't like it, but Leah Thomas was abiding by the rules. And something that Seth focused on, I want you to focus on while you're watching and listening to this, is the NCAA is protecting one athlete at the expense of many. Seth breaks down, I feel like in America, be who you want to be. Change your name to whatever you want. But we know that what just happened was unfair. And it's unfair to the women that have been working their entire lives to get to where they're at. And it's not just about Leah Thomas winning. Leah Thomas being involved in the prelims, being involved in the finals is taking a spot away from someone. Whether Leah Thomas has taken a spot on the podium or just on the pool deck there. It's crazy what we're dealing with, but Seth is unbelievably courageous. What he is doing, speaking out against this, looking for accountability from the NCAA, I hope this is a spark that lights the fire. You've seen a few more people come out and speak out, and I think that's really important because this time right now, it's not a time to be silent. It's a time to stand up and speak out or else we might lose women's sports forever. So upon further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Seth Houston. Hey everyone, I'm sitting down with Rice Swimming Coach Seth Houston right now. What a beautiful day we got going on right outside the Aquatic Center. You swam over here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically did. And I'm not a very good swimmer. You don't you don't want to see me in the pool. But the topic about this is actually seeing another biological man in the pool. And I would love just like sitting down here. I know when I saw you a little bit earlier, it's like I'd love to have a conversation about from your perspective what this has been like. You know, for your athletes, for the parents, for just being around, because everything's led to the championships here with Leah Thomas. Yeah. I'd say, you know, when I spoke out the first time, most of my frustration was just with the NCAA and kind of the lack of leadership at the time and kind of let's put this off on governing bodies. And then, uh, you know, governing bodies come up with a pretty, I think, viable solution and the NCAA kind of said, well, we're not going to, we'll, we'll address that after the year. So, you know, I think it's just kind of been, um, you know, it, it, they have kind of protected one athlete at the expense of many is really how uh, a lot of us here feel. Yeah, because that's what I feel like everyone's so confused about. It's like, why is this the baseline, just allowing this, and then we'll come to the table after. Come to the table after people miss out on, like you said, and we've talked off camera, being all Americans even being in the final heats, getting to the top spot of the podium, it seems like the NCAA has failed these women, these parents, and coaches like you. Uh, exactly, and, and I will say, I feel like the NCAA for the last almost 50 years has probably been the leader in creating opportunities for women. And, and now, lo and behold, out of kind of, uh, you know, just honestly kind of a political correctness, they, they're, regressing and really hurting women and, and uh, again this is I, I, I'm standing up for my team for for uh, just the opportunity for them to have scholarships to you know come to this meet and final uh, to, to be an all-american you know, for all the all the great things that come with being in sport the accolades beyond you know all the hard work and effort they put in and I, I feel like there's a certain point uh, you know, I heard one of your interviews with the Virginia Tech athlete, and what what is kind of the psychological side of it when you're stepping up on the blocks next to to uh, Leah, 
And, and, and again, I don't really want to make this about Leah. Yeah. Um, you know, Leah is really playing by the rules that the NCAA has set and good for her. Uh, but uh, these things probably, well, I know they needed to be addressed way before we got to this point. Because, I mean, even me, I, I don't have a swimming background. All I've done is really watch the Olympics. So that's why I wanted to sit down with someone like you that's been in this for, for a long time. So I, so I watch just now, as we speak, the night before, Leah Thomas won the 500-meter freestyle. And then now just uh, yards, excuse me. <laughs> See, that goes to show I'm not a swimming guy. But you keep you honest, <laughs> that's why we have Seth here. And today, in watching the prelims, it seems like, that Leah was almost holding back a little bit and then just started to turn it on right at the end. And this just got to be demoralizing even before you dive into the pool initially. I mean, yeah, you saw it. I, I don't want to speak for Leah's strategy because uh, I could tell you if I have an athlete who we feel confident can get into the finals, we're, we're not going to lay it on the line in the preliminaries. We're going to kind of do what it takes to get in. Uh, and, and at very well might have been the strategy uh, that was put in place there. So, you know, really you come back and see what happens tonight. Um, but yeah, um, there was definitely um, kind of a controlled effort and finishing strong. And it, was, it was a good, pretty good race strategy. <laughs> and then something you've said too, is it seems like a very black and white issue that has gotten way too confusing. And I know even yesterday when I was talking to people that were supporters of Leah Thomas, they couldn't really explain the, hey, so this person, formerly known as Will, was on the men's team for three years, and then switches over to the women's team, goes from 400 and something in the nation to number one in the events that Leah competes in. Can you explain that? Do you feel like this is someone that's kind of taken advantage of women right now, and it didn't seem like they had an answer to that? I, I feel like what we, in a, I guess I could say the NCAA is kind of in, in cahoots, I guess, with this. Is it, we've, we're kind of taking our culture, um, where, let's face it, you, you were in the, in the venue today. It is a polite, respectful crowd. Yep. Everybody on the deck has been polite and respectful. Um, we, we want the best for everybody, Leah included. But I feel like we've, we're taking something culturally uh let's say in the classroom in the workplace that would be flat out discrimination and just completely wrong to to take a transgender and and have dismiss them or not have them contribute but i feel like there that is different in sport we have created men's and women's for a reason yep. uh you know and this was done back in the 70s uh it, because they knew at the time that there was a big difference physiologically. I mean, the, the male, uh, a, a man changes a, quite drastically from a woman during puberty. And it, if we hadn't made these changes, I mean, women would have been left behind in, the, in sport. Yep. And so that's, that there really does still, still need to be a distinction. And that's why I say it's more or less kind of black and white in the sporting uh, world not in recreational sports, not in fun and games with kids. Yeah. And, and that isn't, that's just my opinion. And it's an opinion of a lot of people. And it, it's not a slam against anybody and who they want to be at all. Uh, and, and I feel that that's where it gets really murky and clouded with a lot of people uh, being angry or frustrated or, or you, know, um, you, know, you know, calling me transphobic or, or anything like that. And that is, I can't, I can't even begin to tell you uh, that's not even my personality or who I am at all. So yeah, it's, um, it, can be, it can be kind of frustrating to feel like you have a logical opinion uh, and, and, and a lot of people will, you know, want to shoot you down for it. But it seems like that's what's happening just culturally in our world. That if I don't agree with what you have to say, I'm going to put you in this box of being transphobic. I can't imagine that 99% of the people in there are transphobes. Like, I, I, you cannot convince me of that whatsoever. And then you're on a college campus all the time. And I know we cover what's happening on college campuses at Turning Point USA. And basically what we want is just representation from both sides. We want to have diversity of thought. Like, let's come to the table and, and talk about this and not get to this point of, oh, you don't want Leah Thomas in the pool or you just don't want biological males 
competing with females, that doesn't make you a transphobe. This makes you want to have integrity and fairness in the sport. But a lot of times conversations are getting squashed and it's really unfortunate because we're seeing a lot of that happen at college campuses. Uh, well, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I can tell you on, on the pool deck, I've had a lot of pat on the backs and hey, thank you for speaking up. And, um, you know, I, I don't say, well, go go on, you speak up too. I mean, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are, are uncomfortable to, in that position. Uh, do you feel like people are uncomfortable speaking because they just don't want to be called those names, yeah. be put in that box, and they just don't know or don't really have the idea of how to get out of that transphobe box that people like to put people in? I, I think there's probably some of that. I mean, you know, we can say, you know, I don't want to lose my job or we our, our school has told us, you know, to no comment. And, and I, you know, those are real. Um, I, I think some of it is just a little bit of fear of kind of, expressing an opinion and and having people you know like maybe shout you down or leave nasty messages or something like that and, and personally i can tell you like i haven't received anything to my face that has been negative uh i've had people try to go to my superiors i've had um i've had nothing but really support and and uh, so i haven't found it to be debilitating for me isn't that just a great reflection of the country that we're in and the culture we're in then that people are getting silenced and I know we were talking about that teammate of the Virginia Tech swimmer that was just on the outside looking in to be a part of the finals that were yesterday as we speak yeah. right now and that was the first time I'd seen a collegiate athlete go in front of a camera and speak and I think that is a total reflection of, of where we're at right now where it's like if you don't agree with this you got to be silent. Yeah, yeah, I feel like with the college athletes, you know, it's a different story when you're here at the meet. Um, uh, you know, they've got, a, they've got their own job to do, you know, and that's, you know, they're heads down, they're training, they're getting themselves prepared, they're being a great teammate to their teammates. Um, you know, speaking out and being kind of uh, in, in that arena is probably not you know, probably in their best interest or where they need to be right now. So I understand why um, a lot of college athletes haven't said said much about it. Uh, I, I sh you know, I, I, I'm not saying it's the adult's job to do it, but, you know, I think we have to t kind of take a balanced, measured approach. Like, where what do we feel like we're comfortable saying? Uh, where, you know, and, and again, I, my whole premise at the beginning was just, I'm looking for fairness uh, in sport, and in this particular case, swimming and, uh, I think most people, uh, you know, it really is most people, like, particularly here at this venue and, and in sporting, they, we see that this is not a fair situation. And I know this is something I've talked about online too, and just being in the building today, you can just tell the energy just changes. That like there's, it's so hyped up, there's big music going on when they're warming up, and then there's other prelims going on, and then watching Leah Thomas get on the pool deck there and it seems like there's just a silence and that everybody knows what is about to happen this biological man is about to beat all the all these women and it's not a shocker when leah thomas touches the wall first and then after that once leah thomas is gone the energy is back up again and i feel like that's why this aspect of silence is deafening here you can tell by people not even saying anything at all what they think about the situation uh, I mean, you, you do feel kind of a difference uh, when 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 that heat is up. Um, you know, I mean, you, we saw it last night. Uh, there was, you know, more cheers for the second place finisher in the 500 free than, than for the champion. And there was polite applause. I mean, uh, it was a great swim. Yeah. I, mean, I can't argue with the, the, yeah. the performance. Um, but, you know, uh, again, people, people, they, they just they're just politely applauding they are being respectful but kind of in a way just disagreeing that is this really the way it should be and again i'm gonna say this this is an ncaa issue yep. uh not a transgender not a leah thomas issue and it's it's a shame that you know the lack of leadership put us in this this place right now and then how can we make sure that 
the faces and names and voices of these women that might have just missed the cut or are finishing second that should be in first if Leah Thomas wasn't competing? Like, how do we make sure that those those names and faces are heard and seen more? I, I think what I hope is uh, that the NCAA will revisit, you know, their rules and how they want to address these things. And, and this is more or less a one-time experience. And uh, hopefully future athletes won't have to go through this process. I just hope, you know, the, the athletes that are on kind of the, the ones who have missed out getting an opportunity to swim tonight. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm glad it's not one of mine. Uh, I'm, I'm not not really sure how I'd handle that, but what what I feel like, again, w what I've said before is, you know, and we learn this as athletes, uh, you, you want to control and manage what's within your power. Yeah. And um, these are, this is an ep something that is not within their power, and they're just going to have to get up and do their best and uh, and learn from it. And if they, you know, kind of they get knocked out, well, hopefully they – you know, they learn from that experience that they're going to come back and hopefully perform well in the next race and, and, and kind of move on. And maybe, maybe they'll be more outspoken or, or, you know, kind of understand what, you know, fairness or lack thereof can, how it can affect people. So how do you go about encouraging your athletes and how would you encourage other coaches to speak to their athletes that might be a little demoralized right now? That might be unbelievably confused or feel like that if they say anything at all that people don't like that could be the end of their career and they could lose friends and they could lose scholarships how would you encourage your own athletes and other coaches i mean john that, that's a good question i mean i could put you could probably put that to even to leah thomas yeah. uh yeah again with the rules that were set up leah thomas made the they Penn made the appeal, the NCAA, you know, based on the way the rules were, was okay to swim. So, you know, uh, same token on, on Leah's side, I, I got to imagine there's <laughs> got to be really hard to focus on what you're doing mm -hmm. and and really racing, it was just with kind of being in the center of attention. Um, and I, I think that, you know, on the opposite side, then the, the, the other other athletes here, um, it, yeah, it's just... You, you're, you're going to have to kind of try to zone in on 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 what you can do. Uh, I, I know I talked to the athlete I have here now. We're not swimming the same events, but uh, you know, know that there's going to be a little bit of a spectacle here, and you know, not get lost in that that scene. And and really, as we say say back home and from the commercial, stay in your lane, bro. I mean, <laughs> you know, let's focus on what you what you're doing in between those two lane ropes and and uh, make that your priority. Well, food, it's a huge part of the sports experience. What if you could buy the food you need for your watch party and donate to TPUSA without even leaving your home? No way, John, right? Ah, you can do that with Good Ranchers. They sell 100% American meat, and they believe so much in what we're doing right here, right now. They'll donate 50 buckaroos to TPUSA on your behalf when you purchase from them. Good Ranchers delivers steakhouse quality beef, chicken, and seafood right to your door. And with our code TPUSA, that's TPUSA, you can donate $50 to our mission while getting absolutely delicious food. Head on over to GoodRanchers.com slash TPUSA today. Get ribeyes, New York strips, gourmet burgers, mm, 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 and so much more. Order now with promo code TPUSA and $50 will be donated to our mission of sharing and preserving true American values and making sure men aren't in women's sports. Go to GoodRanchers.com slash TPUSA to get a box today. Once again, that is, use promo code TPUSA at GoodRanchers.com slash TPUSA. Do good while you eat good. And that's why I think it's so important that you're bringing up this aspect of the conversation that's more than Leah Thomas. This is about the other women swimmers that are here, and this is about generations to come. And that's why you kind of hope that, you know, the NCAA is going to, look at this situation right here right now and hopefully in the off season figure it out but for you individually when people listen to you speak uh watch you on um you know television you're talking to megan kelly you've talked to swim swam it's like be who you want to be sure yeah. whatever name you want whatever gender you want 
like we're we're a free country, but when it comes to fairness, that that's that's what it comes down to. It's like call me a transphobe all you want, but you are the person that's saying be who you want. But if you're a biological man competing against women in sports, that's it. Just comes down to that. It's just not fair. Yeah, I mean, look how fortunate we are to you know in a first world country to uh, this is a, an issue that we're dealing with. I want to say it's fortunate for a lot of people in there, but uh, you know, there's a uh, there's a lot going on out there um, that that we should be so thankful that we we are in a free country where if this is who Leah wants to be, like, and I support that. Um, yeah, I have you know full support of that, and I think most people in the United States do. I think one of the really interesting things, again, this issue, people. You know, talk about dividing people a lot. Yeah. This issue has brought a lot of people from a lot of different constituencies together. Actually, um, yeah. you know, women who who were leaders in in creating you know more opportunities in Title IX and, and you know gender equity, um, you know, might have really come across and, and had some battles maybe with some conservatives and, and some other areas, and and they they're feeling like they've been left out and and you know kind of pushed aside and uh you know i mean it's just really interesting to see how really it has brought a lot of different um groups together yep. and it really isn't as partisan as is a as, a, as we want to make it out to be but that's always a conv convenient thing to do it's like oh this is a left or right issue and i don't feel like this is a left or right issue at all and i think the fact that we talked a little bit more about putting people into boxes like just because you don't feel like a biolog biological male should be competing with females, that doesn't make you con conservative. That just makes you someone that cares about the fairness and integrity uh, of women's sports. And I mean, even yesterday, going back to that, um, I had a security guard outside. He talked to all of us and was saying, that was the first time I've seen Save Women's Sports and the supporters of Leah Thomas come together and actually have a discussion. Yeah. because. That was a great view of what our country looks like, is we have this divide. There's, there's literally this walkway in this road, and you got um, supporters of Leah and people on this side that just want to save women's sports and not supporting Leah being involved in this. It's like, let's, let's bridge that gap. Yeah. Let's, let's actually talk about this and say, it's not about left or right. It's about fairness, and it's about the integrity of the sport. That's yeah. it. Well, I... It is. It's really interesting to see, uh, I mean, when people actually maybe listen to each other a little bit more and just, again, uh, begin to understand maybe where the other other person is coming from. And I, I mean, I really have tried to do that. Um, I think I think one of the things, uh, again, I was probably taken a little bit out of context very early on is like, uh, I, there is a place in competitive swimming for everybody. And, and no if answer buts it, it that's the beautiful thing i like even as a swim coach i i uh you know i i, I run a program and i call it from cradle to grave i mean we have a place for everybody mm -hmm. from as early in life as possible till you know you're ready to kick the bucket <laughs> and so uh and and again all all different ability levels so we that's exactly what we want this is a lifetime sport um it there's so many benefits to being competing in the sport or just the physical fitness side of it and why would we want to turn anybody away we just want to create and under you know i mean there are rules in sports i, I got to follow a lot of i had to follow rules to get get my athlete registered for this mean if yeah. i messed it up uh you know it's gonna be a lot of trouble <laughs> so you know it, you can't have a whole lot of gray area when it comes to you know your sport specific rules uh and that i feel includes you know your 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 male and female biology and that's the way it's been and unless we're going to totally revamp the sport in all sports to be more inclusive in that way uh which i guess is an option um but this is the way it is right now and so i feel like the in 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 this particular case uh like kind of on a transgender side we they there has to be an adapt like an adaption like you know, three years as a as a male competitive athlete in collegiate college, and then two years later as a, as a female is again probably has not been the best uh, use of rules or or the art or just a demonstration of the archaic 
um, rule system that fits there. Because everybody too, it's like we can complain so we're blue in the face about things that we don't like, but you got to be solution oriented. So everybody wants to know, it's like, there's a lot of people I think that are in the boat that they don't think this is right. But it's all about like, well, what's the next step? What's, what's the solution? And it seems like right now what the NCAA is doing is that there's governing bodies. They've talked about a sport by sport approach. And then what happens when you go from college to the next level? It's like, well, what are their rules? And then there's all this whole... Well, it's testosterone level. And then you go to the IOC and they don't really have rules set in place at all. So I feel like everyone's just looking for solutions. I think you can easily dumb it down to you don't think that men should be competing with women. But that's already it's already happening now. And there's got to be a process to understand how do we go about fixing this? What's the solution? Yeah. And that just goes back to what I said earlier is uh, this. You, we, we're so driven kind of in the culture uh to to be accepting and and things like that and we are we are that's a beautiful thing here about uh the united states but um we can't we can't blanket that across the board for everything and in sport again it's 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 just different and i mean the safety the fairness um just the opportunities uh for biological women are, are will be affected and can be affected uh, they are <laughs> right here uh, unless, unless we are more hard, steadfast or hard and fast on, on kind of how, how that, how we're going to accommodate and adapt uh, to 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 work, bring these other athletes into it. So when people say there should maybe be just a transgender category, or there should just be an uh, open division, or something, what what do you think could be done here for someone like? someone like Leah that's like I feel like I'm a I'm a woman now but like biologically you you are a man so like how do you how do you go about that that's I don't know if that's my department right now <laughs> I, I'm I'm a coach uh, and what I see every day and what I work with and um, I, I don't know if I'm that decision maker or problem solver I mean I I guess I have ideas but I think there's a lot a lot of people out you know, a lot of people out there would be very much more qualified to determine, um, you know, what is the, how this, how sport, in our case, swimming or any other sport should be adjusted, or if it even needs to be at all, or, or what it takes to compete in one, one category. Um, you know, I mean, look at sports that have weight categories. Yep. Look at sports that, um, I, mean, I, I mean, there's just all sorts of different ways it's being done right now. Yeah, I don't know if if swimming needs to look at those things or, uh, but again, the way we are aligned right now as a sport and how we compete, um, you know, this is kind of an invasion, I yeah. guess I would say where, uh, you know, if, if we, if we were wreck swimming, we, uh, and we're just getting up and racing and having some fun and there's not a whole lot riding on it. Um, I, heck I do it. We've done it at practice. Yeah. We, I run a master's meet. It's men and women in the same heats. It's based on time. I mean, it, there's all sorts of great ways to bring everybody together. I, I just don't know if this at the national championships is the best place to uh, to um, adjust and change our culture. <laughs> Couple more questions for you because we don't want to keep you too long. I know I know it's chilly out here. Like this weather is still wild to me. I don't know if people can see the lightning <laughs> behind us here. Um, but I think an interesting part of your story, though, is You've spoken out, but you haven't gotten canceled. You haven't had your bio erased from the school website. And I'm sure there's plenty of people that disagree with you. You talk about you got plenty of support here, other people are coming up, but I think it's gotta be encouraging to people to hear what you have to say. It's like, hey, I'm just talking about from a sports perspective here. I don't think this is fair. And also if you speak up, you're not gonna get canceled for it. You're maybe gonna get some backlash online but you can you can speak your mind and it can lead to more discussion well hopefully it it leads to more people just talking about it or or discussing it rationally uh i, I feel really fortunate you know i mean i'm at a rice university is i mean it's an elite private school uh i mean among one of the best in the world uh and and no not everybody is appreciated what i've said uh initially um Again, did everybody hear every word I said? Uh, but my administration has been supportive of of me in, in that you know my 
it's my free speech. Yep. And, um, you know, I really appreciate that. And, and, you know, I've been at Rice for 20 years, and I, I think you, you kind of have, I, I'm not going to say you have to know your boundaries, but I felt like I was in a position where at, at Rice, it, it, you know, as long as I'm uh, being respectful uh, and trying to, you know, share some, some discourse and opinions that are not, you know, hurting people that, 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 that would be okay. And it has been. Um, and again, not everybody uh, at Rice has uh, is valued what I've said. Yeah, and and I, I, I get that. Um, you know, and, and I've been wide open that I would love to talk to anybody who doesn't, doesn't agree with me. And, you know, uh, that, that, that's what we'd be all, that's have people take about. Have people taken you up on that offer at all? Uh, you know, I, I, ha I haven't so much with students, and I, and I understand. I mean, I think, you know, think of it in terms of, like, someone who would maybe be perceived with some power uh, versus a student. And, 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 again, I can totally understand why someone may would not be comfortable wanting to be in a conversation with me over that. And, again, if, if it's a really emotional, sensitive issue to you, um, you know, I, again, I respect that. But uh, I, I feel like our school paper has been rel relatively fair to anything I've had to say. Um, you know, my administration has been supportive. We've actually, just like you said, we've had students initially um, say, hey, you have a lot more backing than, than you know, or that, yeah. but we're just kind of staying quiet. And over one week to the next, as things kind of continued on, we've actually had a number of students speak up. Wow. Uh, which, so honestly, in our little bubble at Rice, there has been a little bit of more discourse. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I think speak in your mind, but doing it respectfully. Uh, there's, let's face it, there's a lot of value in it. That in this this day and age, we're we're probably shying away from because you've got to be either right or left, or you know up or down yeah. or whatever. And and there's nothing in between. And uh, honestly, in this in this particular issue, we found a whole lot more people are probably in the middle of this fight than on either extreme. How do you think history is going to remember these championships? So from years from now, maybe a couple decades or so, how will this be remembered? Uh, well, you know, I've, I think on a, on a, my hope is on a, on a, that the women's, biological women's side that, that uh, this kind of confirmed why we need to kind of have current, current rules and, and, uh, and it, and it, and it, you know, kind of brought out like why we have separated and why we've created these opportunities for women. Uh, and, and then hopefully uh, just on the other side, it maybe there's discourse has become a little more open um, and we can we can make some. We can we can have some differences where what we do socially and what we believe is acceptable, where, again, I think our crowd here has said been very respectful yep. and what we also feel is kind of where where we have to have more you know black and white rules uh is a, it's just the term i'll use on that you know but um you know that to create fairness and and this was this was kind of the epicenter of that and hopefully we're, we're bigger better and and benefiting more later on from it final question for you mm -hmm. if you could sit down with top dogs at the NCAA and Leah Thomas in, in what room, what would you say to the NCAA and what would you say to Leah Thomas? Uh, everything we've talked about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, um, you know, to Leah Thomas, uh, the, the, the great thing again here is you know, if this is who, who you want to be and, and this is your authentic yeah. self, then that is exactly what what we all want for each other and and really if um the bravery is to to be in that place uh you know I, I, there's a lot of admiration and i think people in the crowd there you know if we can get past that it's wrong and this isn't right the, the, we had there's a lot of admiration for anybody who's brave enough to kind of be in the in the, that position um to the ncaa again i it's just like let I, I hate this has been so badgered, but let's follow the science. Uh, and, and I mean, we got a the, dollar for every single time we heard that. But you know, when the original rules were pretty much put in place in 2011, there's a plethora of information, um, not just on you know transgender changes uh, from 
you know, a transgender woman or a, tr a trans man and how much they change and, uh, you know, and, and how, how much their body, you know, is mitigated, uh, but also just, you know, really, um, you know, the differences, again, between the male and female biology uh, that, that, yeah, there's, there's not, again, there's not a whole lot of real argument and people will still come up and tell me that there's been a lot of studies showing you're wrong and there's not that many differences. And I'm like, I don't know what studies they're looking at, but the, 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 I can tell you from experience standing on the deck and coaching men and women, and, and th there are differences. <laughs> and, and they're profound. Well, I hope people hear your heart behind this whole thing, too. And I think hopefully people, when we speak of courage, you've been unbelievably courageous throughout this whole time speaking up about this. And... People can't put you in a specific box. I feel like that's what maybe frustrates people. Is like, well, this guy's saying that Leah can you know be who you want, but knowing that like I still will stand against this when it comes to competing in, in women's swimming. Sure. And then knowing that you want to have discussions too. And I hope that that's what I just I've noticed here. There's been so many discussions with people that are like, I don't know if I really align conservative or I'd really be on the left, but we're agreeing with things. And I think that's the beauty of America. And hopefully we find a solution here and the NCAA can look at this and understand and have a discussion themselves and people can see you for who you are. Uh, not just a, not just a clip here and there, not just yeah. a sound bite here and there, but like hear your heart behind this kind of stuff. And I think hopefully we can get back to that because I think that's another beauty of America. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we, most of us uh, in this day and age are just living on some sound bites and, yeah. and anonymous um, notes on Twitter and that, and uh, we've really lost kind of the, the opportunity to exchange information, ideas, and, and you know, fi probably find, there's probably more in common uh, out there with a lot of these athletes and Leah than uh, what the media and the outside world is gonna give us all credit for. Yeah. Amen to that. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah.